What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as the D365 Geek, and today we are talking about dynamic content in Microsoft Flow. So what is dynamic content? Well, dynamic content is content that you are getting from another part of your flow. So this could be details from a record, details from a tweet, from an email, uh, it could be uh, usernames, it could be email addresses, any other content that we have access to from that first trigger or additional actions are things that you can use in dynamic content to do something in your flow. So let's take a look at a small example of this to try and let you understand how this works. I've set up a very basic Microsoft flow here that when a new tweet comes from the app D365 Geek account, my Twitter handle, we send an email to uh, dynamics365geek at gmail.com, my email address, and we're going to put in some dynamic, dynamic content here. So the first thing we're going to do is in the, uh, in the action um, here, uh, we've got a subject to tweet from. If I click in here, we can see this dynamic content pane open up on the right. Now, what you'll notice firstly is this gray bar up here when a new tweet is posted. That is actually the name of this trigger or this step in the Microsoft flow. So if I had more actions here to go off and do other things, um, we would see a list of these here. So if I just update, uh, if I just update this, say, uh, tweet, and then click back into here, we can see that this has updated. So these are the uh, dynamic content pieces from this first step, so this, um, this trigger in this example. So what I want to do is I want to add in some dynamic content so that whenever um, an email comes in, we are getting the latest thing that triggered this flux. So we're getting the latest content from this tweet. So firstly, I'm going to choose tweet from, and then I'm going to look for uh, his name. So yeah, as you try to search through, you'll see that they each piece of this dynamic content has a name, uh, has like a, a, a text field, which is the name of the field. It also has a short description as well. So in this instance, name, it says name of the user. That's what I want. So we'll um, click on name. And as you can see, it's automatically populated it into um, this field, because like, this is where I selected, and this is where we've added in the dynamic content. I can remove it. I click on the X, and I can add it back in. I just type in name, and click in there. So what else can we do? So we've got um, the body of this email now, and I want to add in a few more bits of dynamic content. So when a tweet goes out, I want to um, I want to send an email with some information about that tweet, for instance. So what was the tweet? When was it sent? Um, and and anything else. So uh, firstly, we'll go. Um, uh, when was this tweeted? So this is just text that I'm adding into the body of an email, and um, this is always going to be the same. And when I click. In here, we're going to choose um, uh, time. Uh, yeah, there we go. So um, we have created that time, time the tweet was posted, and also time which the original tweet was posted. So um, there are there's information on docs.microsoft.com about all these different triggers and actions, and that's where you can kind of see what these different things are. We're just going to choose created at in the interest of time there. Um, then we may want to have uh, what was the tweet. So, now if I don't know the if I don't know the exact um, the exact dynamic piece of dynamic content that I'm looking for, I can just scroll through here and try and pick this up from uh, the descriptions here. So we've got something like um, original tweet text, uh, text content of the original re retrieved tweet. So Sounds sounds reasonable to me, so we can have that in there. Uh, we can also have 
uh, original tweet user full name. Um, so again, uh, full name, add that in, and we can pop that in there. Now, every single time this runs, the system is going to go off, it's going to retrieve this tweet, it's going to find the new information, and that's what this dynamic content is. So unlike where I put the tweet from, that static content that is always going to appear in here. Um, the email address that I put in here, again, static content that's always going to appear in here. Um, instead of um, knowing what our content is, we have this dynamic content that every time a new tweet goes out, it's going to appear in the new dynamic content is going to appear where these fields are. I hope that makes sense. Uh, if it does, great. If it doesn't, uh, leave a comment down below. Uh, please like and share my videos. This is a short introduction into dynamic content and more to come soon. Thanks.